Apple Log 2, OpenGate, and ProRes RAW, it's become pretty undeniable that your iPhone can be used as a fully fledged, capable cinema camera. The amount of latitude that you can get out of the color grade is one of the biggest reasons why I switched all of my narrative and short film productions to shooting exclusively on iPhone recently. And today I wanted to share with you a quick look at the approach that I use to color grade all of my shot on iPhone short films. These are the films that I've shot over the last year or so and this process pretty much stays the same throughout all of them. We'll be looking at footage from three of my shot on iPhone short films. Unsaved, Sweet Decision, and this close. There will be timestamps below if you'd like to navigate to specific clips from a particular short film. All resources that are used in this video will also be linked in the description. Let's get started. Unsaved. I begin by creating a new timeline, and these are the color management settings that I like to use. I'll start off by creating my very basic node tree. Now, I don't like grading in this log profile to begin with, so I'll select something basic just so I can have a look at my scopes. I'll bring down some of the highlights, I'll bring up some of the shadows, and then we'll decrease the gamma a little bit. We can see here that this image is looking a tiny bit green, so what we'll do is just increase a little bit of magenta into the image just here like that. Now let's have a look at contrast. We're going to contrast here where I just used the slider, I typically take it to 1.1. We'll add a little bit of Minto detail into the area as well. What that does is add micro contrast into our image. Looking at our curves now, this is where I'll use the curve just to create a subtle little S shape and then bring up my shadows just a little bit more. From there, I'll introduce one of my first effects that I use all the time, and that's DCTL. This particular DCTL plugin called Tetra enables me to change different hue values for areas within the image. I'll introduce a tiny bit of red into the image as well as a little bit of yellow too. Now, up until this point, I've been utilizing the Apple Log LUT just to get to my image into a base level. But what I prefer to do, going into my own personal LUTs that I like to use, I'll increase a little bit of saturation here, and then we'll also increase our density. Now, the next important thing to do is add our film grain and effects. In order to do that, what I like to use is DaVinci Resolve's built-in tool, Film Look Creator. I'll drag Film Look Creator onto the node. Personally, I only use Film Look Creator in order to do my grain and some other subtle effects. So I'll turn my color blend and my Film Look blend down to zero. I'll then head over to the grain section. I'll disable from 65 millimeter, bring it down to 35 as a bit of a base. I'll turn my saturation down to zero as well as my image defocus up to one. That's looking pretty good. And in fact, we can probably reduce the size of our grain to something as small as possible. And if I zoom into the image here, we can see this is already adding quite a lot of grain. Now the final main piece for our grade is add a slight vignette onto the outside. Now I could stop there when it comes to my color grade and be a little bit more happy with how it is but there's just a few more little effects that I like to add. I'll go just before my LUT and add two more nodes. These nodes I'll call Glow and the other node I'll call Computer. I'll type in Glow, pull it onto the node here, and then I'll play around with some of these parameters. Now I could spend hours on this and I did for the original short film, but finally what I would do is that I do want to highlight something specific and that's a computer. So what I'll make is a power window around the computer like this. I'll then go over to our tracker tool. And then what I'll do from here is add a little bit of exposure and contrast to our computer just so it stands out a little bit more. And there we have it. A lot of people have asked me where I've learned to color grade, what classes I've taken and all of that. And truth be told, most of it has been pretty much self-taught over the years from different projects. But when I did pick up a cinema camera for the first time a few years ago, I definitely went to one source to take a few classes to learn the basics and a few advanced things too. And that was straight on Skillshare. Personally, a couple of classes that I took back then and have actually looked at recently were Fred Trevino's color grading masterclasses. Two of them I really recommend are the Absolute Beginner's Crash Course to color grading and the creating a cinematic look. Those two classes on Skillshare really set the foundation to how I color grade even today. And Skillshare is not just about filmmaking and color grading and everything. I've taken a few other classes as well. I run my entire business and project planning off of Notion, which I learned how to do when I took Ali Abdal's Notion course on Skillshare too. There are tons of different things that you can find, everything from filmmaking to learning color theory, editing, music, marketing, design, and a ton more. Plus, you can really learn at your own pace whenever you want. The platform is designed to help you build creativity in your life by learning directly from real, super talented and successful creatives. The first 500 people to use my link in the description below will get a free month of Skillshare where you can take as many classes as you like. So use the link on screen or the QR code to go and join Skillshare and get your free month and get started today. Now back to some color grading. 
Let's now take a look at our office sequence. I'll go over to my power grade and drop something straight in. This is a power grade with some adjusted settings that I prepared earlier, which are all available below. We'll fly through this here and do some basic exposure adjustments, adding some contrast, reducing our gain, bringing up some shadows, adding some mid-tone detail, adding some curves in. Everything is looking a little bit blue. So I'll, I'll bring in the DCTL plugin and then go specifically to the cyan and green section, just introduce a little bit of green into the image. From there, we'll add a few more nodes here. I'll want to decrease the exposure of the overall ceiling. Then what I like to do is add some detail onto her jacket. So I'll increase the brightness of the jacket just a little bit, increase the saturation. It's important not to overdo it. So we'll add just a little bit of density into it. So now we can see the jacket really does stand out in this image, but we'll probably dial it back just a little bit. So that's looking good. I'll also add a little bit more attention onto our talent here in the center by adding this vignette here. We'll add a little bit of exposure here. I'll copy and paste this node onto a second one invert the selection so it only affects the outside of the image and then drop my exposure a little bit again. So that's looking a little bit good, although the blue here is a little bit too saturated for my liking. So what I'll do is just before my LUT node, I'll open up the color slice tool again. We'll go into the blue and cyan areas, which we can see are these two here. What we'll do here is increase the density of our cyans and blues. We'll also reduce the saturation of our cyans. As you can see by removing and disabling these nodes here, created some nice focus on our talent as well as some background separation and color separation too. And there we have it. Sweet decision. Now taking a look at this shot here, I wanna show you some new techniques that really make this shot stand out. We can see that this is the shot in log, and then with my LUT applied. And then following from there, we'll enable my exposure adjustment nodes, which include of exposure, balance, contrast, and mid-tone detail adjustments. What I'll do after these standard adjustments is move these nodes over here out of the way. I'll then create one more node, plus two more parallel nodes, and then a node before my LUT. We'll then name these nodes as follows. We'll call one saturation, the next one face, background, and then skin tones. Starting off with saturation, we'll go over to our hue and luminance. We'll add dots along our luminance tab and then just increase our reds ever so slightly here. That increases the brightness of our reds. Then we'll hop on over to our favorite color slice tool. We'll increase our total density by 0.26 and then we'll increase our red saturation to 1.45. So before and after, that's adding a lot of pop into our image. We can see that the cheeks on our talent's face is getting a little bit too red. So what we'll do is ensure that everything in this node is affected only on the outside. So we'll grab a power window, put it over our talent like this turn on our power window viewer, invert the mask, and then increase softness. We'll also then track this shot. So now only the outside area is being affected by this red shift. Now what I wanna do is separate the subject from the background. We'll go over to the face node, and this is where my favorite tool comes into play. We'll go over to magic mask, go to better, then select a few dots onto our talent's face. Click this button here so we can toggle the mask overlay. And as we can see, only he is being selected. We'll then track. Because he's looking a little bit dark, all we do is increase our gamma just a little bit to brighten him up, and that's it. What we'll then do is repeat the process for our background. We'll select our background node, go onto AI Magic Mask 2 and hit better. We'll select the background with a couple of dots, toggle our mask overlay, see that's perfectly selected, and then track once again. We can even see with a lot of movement that he's tracked well. We'll untoggle the mask overlay. Now what I wanna do is just slightly decrease my offset tool to darken the background, just like that. And then for my favorite tool, is go over to the effects tab, search radial blur, drag it onto our background node. Right now it's pretty intense, so we'll drop it from 0.4 down to 0.3. And you can see what this does is add a subtle blur in the background and alongside the face node, we can see they're nicely separated before and after. And now what we'll do is finally go over to our skin tones, go into our color slice tab. And because he's looking a little bit pale, we'll increase our skin tones to 1.25. And you can see he's looking a little bit nice and warm now. We'll head on over to our effects tab, add some film grain. And because this was shot in OpenGate ProRes, I decided to go with a 65 millimeter preset and use these settings alongside a small vignette. And there's our shot. This close. I quickly want to show you just two more tools that transformed my final iPhone shot of this short film from this to this. What I do in this first node labeled face is create a power window around our talent, grab the beauty effect filter to smooth out her skin. I'll reduce the strength ever so slightly, which flattens out that over-processed iPhone look on close-ups. And finally, a new plugin I used that transformed the image from this to this is a plugin called Lens Node, a plugin that enables you to replicate a lot of different vintage lens looks. I chose the Petsful Pro look. This is a whole 
whole video in itself, but I wanted to showcase you some of the settings that I use to add a nice, subtle, old vintage lens simulation look to this short film. And it's really worth checking out if you want to add a little bit more of a vintage look to your iPhone footage. These two tools here and everything else I've shown you throughout this video coming together is how I graded this close. If you have any questions about how I color grade my iPhone footage, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. But until next time, have a great day, stay safe, and of course, do take care.